and showtime ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of the channel pro five minute roundup look at news trends and tips for the smb channel in five minutes or thereabouts my name is rich freeman i am executive editor of the channel pro network also a co-host of this program i am joined this week as i am every week by our other host eric simpson a business transformation and improvement advisor to msps and other it providers eric how's it going it's going great, Rich. Hard to believe that Q1 is over after today. Q1 of 2022, where did it go, Rich? How are you doing? <laughs> you know what? I, uh, I, you are um, uh, exposing something I hadn't really thought about, which is, yeah, you're right. We're a fourth of the way into the year at this point, and how about that? And I think I'm feeling it, too. It feels like we've gone through a quarter. It's been a little bit more frenetic, accelerated. I know you've been doing more traveling. In fact, you know, looking forward to a little bit of rest after your recent travel this week, right? Yeah, yeah. I just got back last night from uh, a, a TD Cinex event that I attended out in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. My first time out in Greenville uh, since before the pandemic, 2019. Um, so yeah, it is. It does feel a little bit more hectic, frenetic, but uh, but only because we are kind of getting back to more familiar pre-pandemic patterns. So uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. I, I, this trade-off works for me. Uh, so say we all. All right. Well, let's dive into our story of the week here, um, and it comes to us from Citricom. Uh, a company that uh, folks who are familiar with them probably associate first and foremost with unified communications. That's pretty much what they have done mm. up until this week um, when they introduced a brand new product called Control One, which is a secure networking platform. Mm. So maybe the best way to kind of set up what Control One is all about is kind of set up their analysis of why something like this is needed. Um, you know, uh, what, the, the mission that they have set for themselves going forward is to, and this is in their words, connect the modern workforce. Unified communications is a critical piece of that, but um, it, unified communications isn't very good if it's not uh, running on a great network. And if you're going to be doing networking, that network has to be secure. So there is a bigger need um, out there around connectivity for the hybrid workforce. Um, but if you look at the landscape right now, there are there are plenty of products that feed into that, but they tend to be point solutions. They tend to have been written for corporate IT departments as opposed to MSPs. Um, the people responsible for this system say that they are interoperable and they integrate, but the reality is there are often gaps uh, between these systems that can be an, uh, an issue. And by virtue of the fact that there are a lot of systems from a lot of vendors and the, the user has to kind of figure out how to put it all together, there's a lot of complexity uh, uh, in this picture. And so what Citricom decided they were going to do is create something that was the opposite of all of that. Um, basically, it would be a single um, platform as comprehensive as, as one that they could put together and very specifically tailored to um, MSPs. So, so what's in it? Um, there is a drag and drop point and click kind of environment where you can design a wide area network and supposedly, according to Citricom, uh, you just click, click, click and uh, automated basis on the back end, all of this uh, actually gets set up for you. SD-WAN technology runs it all for you. Um, there is an integrated unified threat management component with a cloud firewall, intrusion prevention, data loss prevention. Uh, zero trust network access, um, some other zero trust uh, capabilities in there, a multi-tenant uh, uh, management interface. And the whole thing is designed to be um, easy enough for a junior level resource as opposed to a, you know, a level two, level three kind of tech uh, to operate. That is, is basically what this system um, is all about. Uh, and, um, you know, that, like I said, uh, Eric, this is sort of a, a move by Citricom beyond its root and, roots in unified communications. They're taking on a bigger uh, market, a big, bigger need and a bigger market opportunity that is maybe a little bit less crowded uh, than the VoIP unified communication space. Um, so uh, interesting product um, and uh, interesting strategic move by Citricom. I was just going to say that, Rich. I mean, it's a very unique pivot but a very strategic one. And you know, you know, I, as many of us might know on, on our program, I am a recovering MSP and I know that we MSPs, I use that in the royal sense, we MSPs like the easy button, right? We wanna push 
as much of that level three tier three service requirement stuff down to level two and as much of level two down to level one so anything that we can do any solution that we can find that allows a lower level of technical expertise in order to deploy and manage and maintain it's a you know it's it's a win so this is a very interesting and unique uh, opportunity and you know the other thing that was going through my mind as I was listening to you describe the story was you know everything all roads lead to the cloud I thought that was one line and the other line I thought was you know the cloud is kind of like the force it surrounds us it binds us right I mean where everything is moving in that direction and I think that these strategic uh, vendors that are seeing that and maximizing are really leading the channel towards where the puck is going to be. We know it's going to be there. They're just making it easier for us to skate towards it. Right. And that, that's very much what this product is about, is, is making it easier to, uh, to get clients to the cloud and to operate a cloud-first kind of managed services practice. Um, you know, I'll, I'll put the counter argument out there. So in, in beta testing of this product, um, some of the MSPs who uh, tested this out said that they could see this system um, basically displacing four to six different um, uh, solutions from four to six different vendors, um, which is a great thing from, you know, easing the vendor management sort of burdens that you have to deal with. But as uh, the guest host of the other podcast that I do for Channel Pro pointed out, that's also a lot of eggs in one basket. And that's the other thing that you're going to have to kind of consider is do you want to place a bet that huge on one product, um, one vendor? So, you know, the, the Citricom folks will have to prove that they really can deliver reliable and secure um, networking. Uh, but, um, you know, if, if they can, then there's certainly going to be a lot of appeal, I think, to a lot of folks and just having fewer tools to, to deal with. Yeah, you know, I have to admit that, you know, I was thinking that risk averse, you know, thought as well in the back of my mind. And, you know, at some point, this big pipe that everybody's building to the cloud will be that single point of failure, right? So the more that we consolidate, the more that we simplify, the more that we all participate, um, you know, the, the more risk averse uh, among us will think, boy, you know, those are juicy opportunities for, you know, bad things to happen, you know, either from a bad actor or just from a single point of failure that, you know, we're not looking out for. So redundancy is important. Failover is important. So all of these things have to be part of a good solution architecture design, right? It's like the early days of VoIP, you know, back in my MSP practice, Rich, in the early 2000s, we we're selling VoIP and the challenge was, well, what happens when that bandwidth goes down, right? We always had, it's, this is so old school, we always had a POTS line, right? Where we could take calls on a phone for a client in case the worst thing happened happened. And it did happen more often than it does today. So I'm glad to say that we've seemed to have alleviated some of that, but risk is risk, right? It, it absolutely is. Um, and that leads us right into your tip of the week, Eric. Um, when it comes to bad things happening, sometimes there there is a little bit of good that you as an MSP can take out of it. And that's what you're going to be talking about this week. Absolutely, Rich. Nice positioning. So where there is risk, there is opportunity, <laughs> right? So the tip of the week is simply an awareness tip a and a way to enable MSPs to arm themselves with fresh information around cybersecurity that they can use to leverage, influence, convince, encourage, get clients to say yes to enhance cybersecurity services as well as prospects. And that tip of the week is simply to set up Google alerts for ransomware attacks, cybersecurity incidents, breaches in the geographic area, the, the local city, the county, the state that the provider delivers service in. And even if you have to expand beyond that, maybe specific vertical markets and things like that, because at the end of the day, Rich, not a lot of small and medium business owners are gonna be swayed by, you know, a colonial pipeline hack. Well, what, what does that have to do with me, right? But if we can find these incidents that strike closer to home, hey, you know, a, a retail store, right? Or the corner bakery, or I know that, you know, that local retailer that got hit, right? 
once we can find those types of news stories, you know, along with our other stories that we can bring to bear. I was speaking with three different consulting clients uh, within the last week that each said that at least one of their clients had had a security incident or ransomware breach attack in the last 30 days. And one said they've had four in the last 90 days. Now, of course, there's nothing like having a ransomware attack influence you to finally sign that agreement for enhanced cybersecurity, which is what tends to happen with some of these partners. So anything that we can do to prove to them that there is a real risk that yes, you may, you know, they may not want your data per se, but they do want your ransom, right? You want your data and telling these stories and bringing this, you know, objective third party news reporting can help move the puck in the right direction. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, there are a few things there. So, you know, it, um, it's telling stories that are, are local, which makes it more real and relatable to a potential customer. It's doing it on an ongoing basis where it becomes sort of a drumbeat. You realize this is not something that just happens once in a blue moon uh, mm -hmm. to somebody that this is a, a an ongoing phenomenon that you have to be aware of. And I keep thinking, I mean, you, you're, you're talking about this in the context of sales and marketing, and I keep thinking of this as a perfect social media marketing opportunity, where what you're trying to do on LinkedIn, say, isn't promote how wonderful you and your company are, but really kind of position yourself as a thought leader in, in your field. Um, and uh, and what better field to, to position yourself as a leader in these days in security? If, if you become the person on LinkedIn who is regularly telling uh, small business owners in the community about these risks and these threats, when somebody gets sufficiently concerned about that to seek help or uh, you know after they've been attacked you're going to be the first call they they place they know that this is something that you think about a great deal so yeah and 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 step one it goes all the way back to where you began eric and that's just setting alerts so that you yourself know uh about these incidents when they happen and can spread the word to uh, current and prospective customers Yes, Rich, as you know, the old adage goes, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed person is king or queen, whichever you prefer. <laughs> well, folks, that leaves us with time for just one more story here this week. And, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, travel, uh, uh, Eric, and uh, I read this week about a hotel um, with an amenity that offers an unusual solution um to a problem that people like myself can relate to so i was just away for a few days you know i come back my my plants are drooping a little bit because i wasn't here to water them so i watered them last night they're they're looking a little bit happier uh today but hey why not just bring the plants with you on the road um because in lexington kentucky there is a hotel the elwood hotel and suites um that now offers what it's calling the world's first plant friendly hotel experience. Um, they've set aside six suites, basically, specially chosen for their abundance of plant-friendly natural light. And then there are uh, cocktail parties and perks, and they've, they've created a whole experience for you and your plants to enjoy um, at the Elwood uh, Hotel here, which in and of itself, it's, it's a, a, a interesting solution to a problem that I guess a lot of frequent travelers can relate to. But it turns out that their thinking um, uh, behind this is that, uh, and I have to quote this to do justice to it. Uh, this is from the press uh, release announcing this. Thanks to a years long pandemic and the rising cost of parenthood, pets are the new babies and plants have been promoted to the new pets. So this, this is an experience for the, the plant lover, Eric, who just can't leave them behind and wants to vacation with them. I just scream, finally. Finally, Rich, I can bring my emotional support fern with me and feel good about it, knowing that it will have the care and attention it needs if I'm traveling to that specific property. Your emotional support fern for that for the person who buys a second plane seat for their fern. Now you've got the hotel room you've been waiting for. <laughs> Well, folks, that is all the time we've got this week on the Five Minute Roundup for you. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be back again, obviously, next week with another episode. You know, we are both a, a video and a podcast these days. So if you're watching the video, but you're into podcasts, you can find us wherever you find your favorite podcast. That's Google and Apple and Stitcher and Spotify. You name it. Go, uh, uh, please find us there. Become a subscriber, rate, review so other people can find it too. Um, if you happen to be listening to the podcast, but you're interested in checking us out on video, that's 
that's easy to do as well. Go to YouTube, look for the Channel Pro Network channel there. Um, you can subscribe there as well. If you click the little bell icon, you'll even get notified when the new episodes go up. Uh, you want to read more about this interesting control one solution from Citricom and all sorts of other stuff about what's happening in the industry and how to grow your business, uh, please visit channelpronetwork.com uh, on a daily basis because we've got great new content for you there every day. To learn more about Eric and the work he does with his clients, you should visit ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K Simpson.com. Once again, we thank you very much for joining us in the five minute roundup. We're going to see you again in another week. Until then, folks, please enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already. already.